Hi everyone, Blender 2.90 has just been released and I got the chance to do the artwork for the splash screen. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you some uh, tips and tricks that I used to create this artwork. And you should also be able to download this uh, demo from uh, the demo page at uh, blender.org. I'll leave a link in the description. When you open up the file, it should look something like this. Uh, this is uh, Blender's solid viewport shading, and you can change viewport shading up here as well. So um, you can change which render engine you want to use, and the render engine kicks off when you hit the render view. So here we go with Eevee. This is uh, the uh, awesome real-time viewport. So when you click that, it's uh, gonna have to uh, compile all the shaders. So you have to wait for a bit. Okay, here we go. Over here, you have the outliner and uh, you can explore here different uh, collections. So here, for instance, is the glowing flowers that you can turn on and off. These are the hand-placed flowers and here are some particle stuff. And uh, for instance, here's the fox with the hair, things like that. So let's have a look at how I modeled this uh, artwork. Let's switch to the modeling tab here. And here you can see I have written a lot of notes that you can read. So this is basically a very hand sculpted part. And over here we have, uh, this started as a, um, liquid simulation and I used that geometry to I just decimated it and pulled it around a bit then used it as a base. If we take one of these elements and just turn off the modifier stack we can have a look at how it actually is uh, made. So here we can see that it has been uh, decimated. It's not really a pretty topology here because it's a static image is the product so it doesn't really need uh, something fancy. It's also like a time saver to not spend too much time on that. So here we can see I have a curve modifier and basically it assumes that it looks at the deform axis. So this is a plus X. So we can find the axis over here. It, it assumes that the object starts here in Orego and then is continuously modeled along the X axis. And then we use this curve to deform this model. So if I turn that on, you can see that it is deformed. So if I find tail curve 003, uh, it's tail curve, here we go, deformers, it's in tail curves over here. So if I go into edit mode, I will actually be able to deform the geometry object. This is a really nice way of uh, modeling more complex forms. And you can actually go into control T or use the tilt function here. So that actually spins or twists the GEO object. So this is a really good way of doing complex stuff. Okay, let's have a look at texture painting. Changing to this tab. Here I've written some notes. It says like it's very um, slow to paint on a very dense mesh because Blender needs to look up the look at each of these polygons and transfer it over to UV space to place the pixels, so to speak. Uh, so it takes a bit of time. So we could actually just temporarily turn off the multi-resolution modifier. Then it becomes quite quick. We could also just set the level in the viewport to one or so. Let's turn on EV. So I'm gonna select the head, press tab, go into texture paint, press this tab as well, the active tool. So the usual workflow is to use a UDIM workflow. I realized that you can't pack the, the UDIM tiles within the Blender file because these textures are contained within this Blender file, which makes it a nice little package that you can send off. But I'm gonna show you the UDIM thing afterwards as well. So let's select the head color one. That's this um, part of <laughs> the mesh. And here we have a oil paint that I made. So here you can just paint away for a bit. Do something fun. 
Change to yellow. Oh, it's beautiful. Perfect. If I want to paint with a UDIM workflow, I have to duplicate the head. It's going to fry the material, create a new material. And then I'm going to remove the image from the image editor by pressing the X. It doesn't mean that the image will be deleted. It's just temporary removed from this view. And then I'm going to choose a new texture and I'm going to check tiled. Call this uh, fun paint. Let's make it a 2K. So this is just a black image right now. And if we go into this is the base color, I'm just gonna press this button, choose image texture, and then over here, I'm gonna search for fun paint. That's the one. So this part is very strangely colored. It just means that there's no texture information in that space. You can open a temporary UV editor perhaps just to show you. It's placed in UDIM 1002, and there's no texture information there. So we're going to create a new UDIM tile, 1002, yada yada. So now there's two uh, texture tiles, and I can start painting. And now I can paint over seams. No problem at all, even in a rendered view. And if you want to have a very snappy and responsive texture experience. You just change to the solid view. Change color. You know, there's millions of tutorials like this on YouTube. So let's not linger. Okay, so let's have a look at the shading on this artwork. Switching to the shading tab over here. I've written some notes here. Whenever you select an object in Blender, you know, it will auto load the material. And if you want it to stay there, you just press this. But I've, I've marked a bunch of different nodes as green, so you can know what you can have a look at and change. So this is the uh, fox color. If you want to enter a node group, you can do so with tab. Since I wanted to pack the textures within the Blender file itself, I made like a UDIM texture setup. So this is just a um, texture that covers uh, this part. And then the second, I think it's the ears and uh, some of this stuff. And then the third part is, I think it's this. And then the fourth part is stuff over here. So you can actually like cut this and then you can quickly see, ah, 1004 is apparently this part, that's fun. We can just color that really quickly and we can reconnect the texture as well. So we get those colors back and we can enter this uh, node group as well with tab. So tab is down into the node network. So this is way too complex to go into, but you can have a look and uh, try to understand how it's set up. If I want to go up side of this node group again, I just press control and tab. Then I come up here then control and tab. So, so the green area back here means that you are inside of a node group basically. So now I'm back in the shader again. So what's the next thing we can play around with? So here's something. Oh, an ID mask. That's cool. What I did was basically build a node group that masks out the color that is selected here. You can do shift as well. So kind of depends how mu much other surrounding colors that you want as well. And you can multiply this so it gets higher intensity. Change the hue and different colors will light up and become emissive. So that's cool. Oh, here's a color glow as well that you can play with. Mmm, bloom. Next thing we have over here faked fog for more control and that was actually pablo's suggestion since he said like oh we're gonna have the blender logo here it would be nice if we could fade this out a bit i really wanted uh more control than just adding fog this is actually using oh yeah this value only goes between um, one and zero once you go over one it's just it just clamps at one so this is how it looked from the start and I said to one, it's faded out. So what I did here was I use an object 
as the um, texture coordinates and then apply a, a gradient to that area. So if we expand this node, we can have a look. Oh, something called fog fake position. So let's uh, fog fake position. It's in shading related. So it's this locator. So if I drag this around, I should actually be able to, yeah, to like fade the fog into different areas of uh, the fox as well. So this is the texture that I've used, like a, just a spherical gradient. And I can use the math node here to control how big it should be. Here we can play around with wipe. This is um, a mask that is uh, controlled by using the uh, window that you are looking through. So if I use the wipe here, we can see uh, <laughs> how just the the color uh, without any shading looks. So here we can switch direction, uh, invert, and so on. So it's fun with node groups because you can easily snag these and use in your own projects. And if we enter these with tab, we can see how they are set up. Another fun part of the shading is actually the eyes. So these are procedural eyes. They are a bit stylized, but it's interesting. You can find out a lot of stuff about shading if you have a look inside. So here's something play around here. It says radial mapping. So here's basically a Voronoi texture that is mapped around the sphere. So if I go in with tab, I can have a look. So I'm first I'm using texture coordinate to place a sphere and a radial texture. The radial texture helps me to map this X position or the X mapping of the Voronoi. And then with a gradient texture, I just map from the inside out. So I get these UV coordinates as, you know, X is in this way and Y is in this way, also called like U or V. I can use any texture really and use those coordinates to map another texture. So I can just take this and combine into a XYZ, then do some multiplication here. So this is the tiling. So if I pull these values from outside of the node group, instead of having tiling like this, if I increase the values, I would get more tiling. The texture will repeat more times around this axis or around this axis. We can jump out again, and I'm just gonna press Control Shift on the final note so we can see the result. So here we see again the radial mapping and the spherical mapping. And here we can see uh, it's the same thing here, really. But it's more, uh, yeah, it's more uh, visible. So that's the x-axis, and this is the spherical one. So then I just connect that to a Voronoi texture. So what I have over here is just a pupil, so I can change the size of that. I created a node group and that I called UV Spherical Mask. There is already a uh, spherical texture in Blender, but I just added a bit of you know, contrast values and stuff like that. And I also wanted to quickly be able to move this around as well. And um, you can have stuff like that as well. You can go in there or have a look at how it's built as well. The key thing I'd say is the gradient texture over here. So I'm just pushing and pulling the mapping of that gradient texture basically to shape it, like make it longer like that, or so I can have a shape like that, or push it the other way so I can have a shape like that. Let's have a look at animation. When <laughs> you move the timeline, press this play button. It plays some um, bit of flappy animation on uh, this part. It doesn't really update all that fast now since we have the the render view on. So if we want it a bit more snappy, we could turn on solid mode instead. And I've turned on random colors here as well. So now if I play it, we get more of a real-time feedback. If we take this object and investigate how this is made, we can turn off the modifiers. 
and once it's laid out here we can see that it's just still and displaces like this and then we have the curve modifier that deforms it like this so you get the impression of this type of deformation let's have a look at how it's made it's just a displacement modifier and uh, it uses the coordinates of an object and that object is called disp x location or look uh, zero zero one so if we expand deformers we should find it somewhere here it is so it's actually this object over here and we can see that it moves across the uh, world space per frame and if we investigate over here we can see that it's an expression if you want to create a driver expression just start with hashtag like this then write frame times and then it's 0 0.1 plus 3 just wanted some type of seed i guess so let's have a look at compositing as well so if we change to the compositing tab we can see the compositing nodes here and some image the interesting thing about blender is that it has the entire vfx pipeline in it as long as you have activated use nodes in the compositing whenever you do a new 3d render it will automatically be composited so i'm gonna hit off a new render okay now the render is done we can actually shut that down here i can press ctrl shift if i have the uh, node wrangler add-on activated it has this viewer that will be automatically connected so in order to see the viewer in the image viewer you just write viewer here and you see the result so this is the uh, raw rendered image and then we can look over here a slight vignette thing and uh, that i made here got some blur and stuff it's very hard a bit more soft then here over here i think i just mix the uh, vignette stuff with the original image so that's before and this is after then i add some bit of lens distortion and then i do another lens distortion i sharpen off on you can really go uh, crazy with this one then some grading so this is before and after there's a bunch of helpers down here so you can see the histogram the waveform vectorscope you can do a sample line like that and uh, that's it